Hi everyone, Mindy here today for Lawn Fawn and my card today is going to be sharing how I created this interactive card using the Let's Toast pull tab add-on. I am having way too much fun having these creatures popping up with a fun little message. The first thing I'm going to do to start my card is color up my little critters. So the two stamp sets I'm using today is Manatee Rific. And then I also used some images from So Jelly. I did stamp these on the Lawn Fawn white cardstock, which is Copic friendly. And I stamped them in the Lawn Fawn jet black ink, which is also Copic friendly. So I'm starting off, I am going to be putting my darkest area on this particular manatee on the left hand side. I'm going to keep the lightest area to the right, which is the direction he's facing, he or she. And I started off with my C6 as the darkest color. And then I will blend out with C5, C4, C3, and C2. Now I added the darkest areas to the very back of the manatee on the left hand side. I added a little bit of shadow under the one flipper and just a little bit underneath the mouth or the muzzle. Not sure what you call it on a manatee. For my second manatee, since I want these to kind of be facing each other on my card, I'm putting the darkest color on the right hand side of this manatee, a little bit under the flipper, and then a little bit on the tail. And I did put just a little bit of that C6 underneath the muzzle. And then I blended out with those same colors. So I use the same colors on both of these manatees. And I do typically like to color my images twice just to help blend them out. It's kind of more of a, a judgment call, whatever you prefer. If you think it blended perfectly, then you can stick with the one layer. Just depends on how the ink blended or soaked into the cardstock. Once I have the manatees colored up, I'm gonna go into the seaweed. So I use the YG25 and the YG17. I did do the YG25 first, which is the lightest color and just adding a little bit of a line of the YG-17, just to have that contrast. For the starfish, I'm using Y-35 as the darkest color, Y-15 and Y-11. I did keep the darkest color off on the right hand side. When it comes to the shells or the starfish, I really didn't have a light source in mind. I just made sure to have one side darker than the other. So I always had my darkest and then the lightest, just to make sure I had that contrast to them and where they go on the card, it really didn't matter. So my seashell, I have V04 and V01. I did the other shells, uh, what I have three of them there, and I did R22 and R20. I really like that pink combo. Now for the jellyfish, I am using one of my favorite purple combos. This is just a go-to of mine whenever I'm coloring something purple. And that's V17, V15, and V12. Once I have everything all colored up, I'm just gonna use the coordinating dies, attach them with some post-it tape, and then I'll just run those through my die cut machine. And then here is just a quick look and all of the images once they are die cut out and I'm going to put them off on the side to work on the rest of my card. So I'm going to start by creating the bottom of my sea or ocean. I'm going to create that sand at the bottom. I'm starting off with some antique linen. Now I am using some Bristol Smooth cardstock and it is trimmed to four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm not going to use the entire piece of this. I'm actually going to be die cutting waves from this, but I did want to start with the ink blending first before I did any die cutting. I just thought that was easier to work with a bigger piece of paper. So I'm just lightly laying down that antique linen and then I'll come in with vintage photo and I'm doing a really light hand at this. I didn't want to go in too far just yet since it is such a darker color. I didn't want it to overpower my antique linen. So I'm just lightly blending that on there in a circular motion. And then I'll go back over it with the antique linen. Next, I'm taking that vintage photo and just smooshing that down onto my craft mat, spritzing with water, and I'll pick it up with a paintbrush and then flick it onto my sea bottom or ocean bottom there. And I did bring in a piece of cardstock just to block the rest of it. I didn't want all those speckles getting on the rest of my card where my ocean's going to be. 
So now for the water portion of this, I did speed this up quite a bit. And the reason being is I way over blended on this. I kind of forgot at this point that I was going to be die cutting this. I'm not going to use the whole sheet. So I just really way over blended. But I did want to leave all this footage in here for you in case you wanted to see what I had done. I used Twisted Citron was the first color that I laid down and I went all the way down to the sea bottom with that. Then I did Peacock Feathers. And then I came in with some chipped sapphire. I wanted the top of my waves to be a darker color and have that more light minty color towards the bottom. So this is the stitched waves die that I'm going to be using. And you can see I didn't need a good a top half of that sheet. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing that chipped sapphire down further. I'm going to be bringing in that twisted citron and peacock feathers and bringing that down towards the sea bottom more. And just kind of blending those out, making sure I don't have any harsh lines. I wanted a really nice smooth blend. And then just bringing in that stitched waves die and kind of getting an idea how much I wanted to show. That's something I probably should have done when I started. But I did want to just show you all those steps and how I kind of corrected it. So you can see I have the chipped sapphire there. I have the three layers of colors that I wanted for my water. And then I can just run that through my die cut machine and cut out the stitched waves. The next thing I'm going to do is create my own stencil and I'm using white cardstock with the puffy clouds die and I'm using all three of those different shapes. So once I run those through my die cut machine, I'll have my stencil ready to go. You can do this out of cardstock, you can do this out of acetate, whatever works for you. Depending what colors you use, you could save these and reuse them. So here I'm also taking another piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock. This is just my favorite cardstock for ink blending. I think inks, the Distress Oxides, go on really well with it. The first thing I'm doing is bringing in a light layer of Mermaid Lagoon. Now you can kind of see it's splotchy and I'm not worried about blending that out. I want it splotchy because whenever you're looking up at the sky when there's it's a cloudy day, the sky isn't always crisp blue. There's kind of splotches in it. So I left it that way. Then I'm coming in with my first stencil that I created and I'm going over the edges of that. I'm pulling it up just a little bit. I didn't want to pull that ink up too far up. And you can see we created our first layer of clouds. So I'll bring in the next one and do the same thing. This actually would have been easier if I would have used a smaller, like a finger dabber. The, the regular ones still work great, but a finger dabber probably would have been a little bit easier to control where that ink is going. So I'm not going all the way up to the cloud that I had just done. I'm just going along that edged border and blending up just a little bit. And it's going to create this beautiful cloudy sky background. So this is just a look at what it's going to look like with the waves on top. And then I'm going to take the small dotted rectangle and I'm going to die cut both of these pieces around that so I'll have a nice frame for my card. Next we're going to start using the pieces from the Let's Toast Pull Tab add-on. I'm taking this first peach and I'm going to cut a notch out of the top. This is going to be about where on my card one of my manatees is going to pop out. So I'll go ahead and get that die cut. Then I'm going to line up my waves and I do this a lot. I bring my waves in or my manatee and just get an idea where I want it to pop up, where it's going to go on my card, how far down do I want it. So you can see I'm just kind of playing there with the idea because now I need to create that little uh, notch that we're going to cut out for the slider piece. So I just kind of hold my manatee in place, line up that notch, and this is the straight one. This isn't the curved one on this add-on set. And then I'll just hold that in place and run that through my die cut machine. I already pre-cut this piece out of the white cardstock, so I'm folding in on the first scored line and then folding out on both sides so we'll have that placement there. This is where our manatee is going to go. And then I'll just kind of pinch those together and push that from the back up into the front. And I'm kind of giving it, giving it a little test run to make sure it's sliding really well. Now you can see that that placeholder is bigger than my manatee, which is fine. I'm going to trim that down again. I'm going to customize it to my card. 
So once I have an idea, I'm going to go ahead and just trim a little bit off there. That way you're not seeing that behind my manatee. Now there is going to be some space down below towards the bottom of the manatee. That's perfectly fine. You're not going to see it anyway once I start putting the waves on top. So just using some quarter inch tape, double sided tape, I'm going to put those onto that placement holder in the front. And then I can add my manatee on top. And I'm lining up how I want him popping out of the water. So you can see there's a little bit of the white there. That's okay. It gets covered up anyway. And he just looks so cute popping up out of the water like this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm pushing my tab all the way down. And I'm just giving it another run. I'll push it all the way down and trim off this excess. That way we still have some room to pull that up. Next, I need to t uh, stamp a little message at the top of that tab so my recipient knows what to do. And since I hadn't used this particular stamp yet, I just kind of practiced on some scratch paper to get it conditioned. And then I'm going to pull the tab up and just attaching that stamp to an acrylic block, I'm just going to stamp that message pull here. Then I'm taking that other white strip that we die cut and I'm just folding on those score lines. I'll take some more of the double sided adhesive and I'm attaching that to the middle piece on the back side and then I'll flip it over and put some of that adhesive on that tiny tab. Once I have that double that uh, backer sheet removed, I'm going to pick up my slider piece, wrap that around it and just give that a good push down. This is just to make sure our slider piece or our tab doesn't move or shift when we're um, pulling it up and down. So that's just going to be kind of holding that in place for us. And now here I'm going to be popping this up with some foam tape because I want to be able to give my manatee room to move up and down. So I'm lining the bottom and the sides and I'll put a little bit more on the right hand side. You just want to make sure that it's not going to be where your critter is, otherwise it's not going to move. So you want to be able to give it plenty of room to move up and down. And it's working great. Next, I'm going to come in and start just laying out where the rest of my critters are going to go on my card. So I have the starfish, I have a few of the seaweed, and the other manatee. So I'm just going to line these all up. That way, if I want to change anything, I still have time to do that because I didn't stick anything down yet. So just creating the scene for my card. The hardest part is over, which was the mechanism, and that's all set. So then now I'm just taking the liquid glue and adding that to the back of all the critters. Just creating this really great ocean scene. I love how that sand and that twisted citron blended together. It just is seamless. Now for my card base, I'm actually using Narwhal cardstock. I haven't used this in a while. So that is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I layered that with a piece of white cardstock, which is four by five and a quarter. My interactive panel, I'm just layering the back with foam tape. And another place here too is you don't want to have it right next to, or I should say on top of that slider piece. You can go around it, but you don't want to put any foam too close to that slider piece or it isn't going to move. So once I have the release paper removed, I can attach that to the front of the card. And I'll give it a test run, make sure everything is working smoothly. The last step to my card is just creating a sentiment. So I'm also using some of the Narwhal cardstock and I'm going to use the Let's Toast stamp set. And I'm just going to ink this up with some clear ink from Lawn Fawn and then I'll heat emboss with some white embossing powder. And I thought this Narwhal cardstock just tied in really well to the colors of my manatees. So then once I have this tapped off the extra of the embossing powder and then heat set that and the white embossing powder really pops off of the narwhal cardstock and then I'll bring in one of my favorite go-to dies for sentiments is the everyday sentiments banner and I'll just die cut that out 
and I don't need the whole thing, so I did trim off the excess there on the right-hand side, and I'm just going to attach that with some adhesive. And it does say popping up to say, as far as the inside of the card, I'm going to leave the inside of the card blank because it could say popping up to say I love you or happy birthday or congratulations. Anything would be perfect to go with that stamp set. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at another way to use the Let's Toast pull tab add-on. Thanks again.